Like a moth to a flame, it pulls the same. Next thing we know, we're in a now bear's den. Tomorrow, I know it all. Hello, everyone. I'm Adam with Demi Plane, and thank you for joining us for this evening's Heroes of the Plains. We've got some sponsors, and then we're going to jump right into the action. So, first of all, returning, we have Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Incredible game that has so many Heroes of the Plains characters in it. You need to check it out. There is a code for an Electrum chest on your screen and also popping up in chat, I am sure. So thank you for, if you're coming from Idol Champions, thank you. Stay a while and, and check us out uh, if, if you'd like to. And also we have returning sponsor Talon and Claw. We're going to be giving away another premium dice vault tonight. So pay attention to chat where you'll have all the instructions to enter and potentially win that. So if you haven't picked up one of those, definitely enter. People are winning these things. They are receiving them. They're loving them. You will too. And finally, we have Sirenscape because epic games need epic sound. They are providing all of the music in the background tonight. And so uh, it, it, very enjoyable. I use that in my own games. So check them out too. We love them. And I think that that's everything other than I just want everybody to know that I am missing a, an epic battle tonight with, uh, you know, we'll just uh, a brave team of heroes. We'll call them the Stags. And they are taking on some mercenary, the best mercenaries that money can buy in a game that seems unwinnable. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that other game goes. And we'll also play some D&D here tonight. Turn it over to you, Todd. I don't Adam, know what the sports so ball game is that you speak of. <laughs> Cheers to you and your stags. Fear the deer. The sports. Previously on Heroes <laughs> of the Plains, a bunch of people cast Wish, reset the timeline, and eventually stole the hammer of a god. This all happened and changed the very fabric of the D&D multiverse. You all found yourselves after many years, and sometimes just a few days, in a demiplane where gods are not allowed that was essentially a refugee camp set up by Averin to go back in time to grab people, innocent people, who had died in cataclysms and catastrophic events, either done by powerful mages, powerful gods, or tyrannical rulers. While there, in the state of a vacuum, you found yourselves growing increasingly powerful to the point of being lesser gods or demigods in a demiplane. Once you left using a time travel slash teleportation device from an old friend named Rarv and also a squirrel uh, of Norse origin, you found yourselves at the very end of the D&D multiverse, at the very foundations where the roots of Idrasil, the world tree, stick out into the darkness, where there is nothing but coldness and the absence of light in existence you moved from island to island via the roots of the world tree and found yourselves in the prison of the norns in each prison you found multiple versions of not only yourselves but several other people that you didn't recognize and it seemed as if they were all slowly dissolving slowly fading becoming less transparent including orkara eldrex which may not have been mentioned, the dragon form version of her, the one that is this massive golden dragon, you released, polymorphed into a kobold, but looks very weak and sickly, as do the parade of action figures that are possessed, that are hanging off of Briv's coattails and his armor at this moment, but still looks sickly and not 
well. You managed to destroy a spherical object that caused all of the force fields in the prison to drop and darkness fell in the hallway. You, for ha thanks to a few interesting rolls, uh, Orkira Eldrex's hand made everything t turn to cheese. A little baby griffin led you to the Norns themselves, to the very door of the Norns, inexplicably. I can't say it. That's great. Another word I know I can't say. Um, <laughs> and also, a spider, mechanical spider that tried to kill you suddenly became very confused and wandered off. And now you find yourselves outside of the door leading to the room of the Norns, to the ba very base of the world tree. What are the heroes doing? A few things. <laughs> Panic panicking internally. And ready. That's a free action. It's a free action, everybody. Uh, Panic is a free action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm also going to um, ready a few things for myself. Um, just in case this goes south. Uh, Whittle lights a match and holds it against a rune that is on the sole on the bottom of her boots. Uh, as you see this rune ignite, a little spark flies off of her boots um, as she readies Flamestride. Uh, you also see her pop eight new lenses into her goggles as she readies Crown of Stars. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to use Subtle Spell to hold the Fireball spell at fifth level um, for later use. But I'm holding on that. Okay. And using Subtle Spell, that will make it um, imperceivable when it comes to anything like a, mm -hmm. a reaction. Right. Okay. Anyone else? Penelope will kind of sidle over to Briv and just say, I don't know what's about to happen, but if things go south and I have to do something really big, I want you to be able to do your thing, okay? And she's going to pat him on the back and she's going to cast Freedom of Movement. Huzzah and Penelope, if we do die here today, I want thee to know that twas an honor to fight alongside thee. And then I'm going to pat her on the back, probably too hard. And um, as I do, I am casting Warding Bond on Penelope. Wait, 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 wait. No saying goodbye, you guys. Like, come on. Uh, the fate of multiple realities is hinging on us. We've been through worse than this. It's fine. No, we got this. We got this. I am pretty we, certain we, we have totally. not been through worse than this. We got I, Probably, I, like, so much stuff has happened to us. It's all, I mean, like, isn't agony subjective? No, this is fine. We got this. And if we don't, uh, just grab each other's hands and I'll get us out of here. Sounds like a plan. We can all always right. survive to fight another day, right? Uh, one thing, though, and I know, I know, this is going to sound strange coming from me, but when we go through here, I, I would just like to have a quick word with the Norn before we do what it is we do. Well, I think that's right. great. No, okay. let's have several words. The whole idea is yeah. like, we're gonna try to convince them that what they're doing sucks. Yeah, I mean, maybe not several words. I feel like we're gonna know fairly quickly whether or not words are doing the thing. But yes, I, I mean, like words can be said before. I, I think that's a great idea, Freely. And you know, I'm, I'm gonna be right behind you all cause I'm not very persuasive, but just in case uh, you need backup. I've I've got the firepower along with Orkira here. Actually, Whittle. Yes. If this goes really wrong, like really, <laughs> really, really wrong, you should run as fast as you possibly can. Oh, yeah, no, that's not going to be a problem. Because <laughs> not only are you the fastest of all of us, for whatever we're guilty of doing, you're the only one who wasn't there for any of it. So, you have the best chance of escaping. I mean, you have a good point. I'm guilty of a few things, but maybe they forgot about that. Only if it comes to that. Only if it comes to that. Uh, I used to try to tell my mate when I would return after some kind of bender at the local establishments that I did not do any of the carousing or the drinking. 
and it was all mine friends that did all of it. And she, first of all, did not believe me, but second of all, said that there was guilt by association. So Whittle, I'm not trying to make thee feel like thou art going to die along with us, but the chances of that happening are actually fairly high. No one's dying today. That's not going to happen. And also, you're not guilty by association, at least as far as the Norn are concerned, because nah, they don't, I don't get to... I don't really feel guilt that much, so I'm okay in that department, but also I'm just, I'm just planning on running. <laughs> I'm still planning on getting us out of here if things start to go bad. Um, it's, it's an excellent plan, Orkira. I believe in you. Well, you don't have to believe in me. You just have to promise that when the time comes, everybody holds hands. Because the last time I tried to get everybody out of here, there's a lot of like, oh, I don't, I want to be the last to stay by. Everybody was trying to like protect me. Can, can we all decide to leave together if that happens? We need a code word. I think so. Frank I think the code word is, or Kira, get us out of here. I think they will maybe, know what that means. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. bat. Yeah. Maybe we all just scream, bat. I, I think screaming sure. in, in flames, and I, I think it's going to be pretty clear when it's time to go. Uh, are, are, are we we ready? We ready? One more thing. No, I. Wanted... I... Oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Alindra. No, finish what you were saying, please. Uh, I just want to do two things. One, I want to go to the kobold, <laughs> the dragon kobold. Um, can I? Yeah. Are you feeling okay? No. Do I see the bracelet? The bracelet is not on. Can I tell why they're translucent and... They are translucent and it's starting to get to, get to the point where you can almost perceive bone structure underneath their skin. I don't, I don't think I feel... I don't know. I don't know. It might be too late. I don't know what's happening. I think I do. Stay close, okay? Um, I can get you somewhere. Once we're done here, we'll get you somewhere so that you're going to be fine, okay? Okay, I trust you. Uh, right after, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Right after we let everybody out, we called like if any of the heroes were going to fight for their freedom to come with us. Do we get any indication that any of them are coming or did every iteration of us bail? Because <laughs> every iteration uh, of us sucks. <laughs> almost all, all of the iterations you found can't did like uh, several of them did follow mm -hmm. and are noticeably weak and incredibly ill. And some of them are having to like lay down. Ah. Mm. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to do just before we go in, I will um, once again, activate my channel divinity um so i will do explosion of life so for the next minute there's a 30 foot sphere of bright light around me you are all resistant to fire damage um and i'm gonna do the the temporary hit points again um and so let me see what i roll so if you don't have any temporary hit points you get these three these don't stack so i have these to take the new you don't have to take the new, you take whatever okay. the higher is. So if okay. you have zero, you get three now. Okay. If you had from before and you had more, you get to choose what you take. And yep. uh, if we get into initiative, I get to roll that again. And if I ever roll higher than your current temps, you get those, Okay. Uh, but they don't stack. So if you, so everybody should have at least three temporary hit points. Was um, the temporary hit points that you gave us last time five? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Five. So if you have those have right now, you get to keep those. Awesome. If you didn't get anything, you get. And Alindra? Oh, I so Orkara, like... did you do Death Ward? On Amy? <sighs> Does anyone want a Death Ward? Or is this the kind of thing where if it comes to that, we're fleeing? It's gonna be fine. Yeah, I agree, agree with Freely. Yeah, we no, should just go in, say hello. It, Freely's pretty convincing. It'll probably yeah. be fine. It's gonna be okay. But yes, Delindra. Um, I would like to cast Bless on everyone. <laughs> um, Including me. <laughs> would you like to be blessed, Freely? I suppose I will if everyone else is doing it. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's entirely up to you. I will accept it under these circumstances. <gasps> and uh, there is a shimmering of light and a, a sense of understanding uh, the situation we are in uh, as Bless sets in on all of you from Atma. Um, additionally, I would like to ready... I would like to ready... Globe? You need no, I, no, I, I, I'm good. Uh, I... Yeah, uh, I'm gonna ready uh, arcane gaze, uh, and 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 have it uh, have a portal here. Oh, I need to be able to see both, don't I? Never mind. Never mind. Um, okay, that's fine. We, that's what I. I guess that's what I ready. I have one I've, last thing, and I have one last thing too. Sorry. Go. I go turn. Ahead. I turn to the versions of ourselves, and the Jester Joes and Machetes and everything. And then I am just going to say, um, I once traveled to a faraway land called the Mall, and in that world, I encountered a story. It was a book, and I took it back with me. And once I read it, there was the legend of a dread pirate that one time was completely incapable of even holding a blade, but he completely tricked the bad guy into thinking that he was going to whoop his ass. And so, ultimately, I think that even though all of thee are fading away and likely to die, and probably will not be any actual help, I think that thou coming into the room with us, and at least acting, puff out thine chest, and acting like thou art serious business, shall help our cause. You're muted. Speechless. Go mm. ahead and roll a persuasion check. <laughs> Excellent. And Ooh, also that, that is a twenty-seven. <laughs> you you see all these very sickly, evenly kind of ir iron golem version of Briv and uh, uh, strange version of Freely that goes by Victor uh, stand up from their sickly looking. Uh, uh, laying down in the hallway and they all kind of get up slowly as if kind of battle hardened that feeling that you have after you've been fighting for too long and you are too sick and they stand up and they start to follow you one after another Huzzah. I'm going to walk over to Briv after he's done inspiring everybody and quietly I'm going to say hey Briv you know how to cast Revivify right? I do, but all of mine energy is completely spent. That's good to know. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to do something that's going to feel selfish. Because I can still do that. And I will cast Death Ward on myself. That is not selfish at all, Orkira. It's not selfish to protect yourself. You I usually don't like doing it, but if if I'm the only one who can bring other people back when i think happens. about death i touch myself and thou shouldst too and then as though, <laughs> as though inspired <laughs> as though inspired by briv's awkward words her hand lights up with fire and she will once again top of her head as though she was going to face palm and the fire cascades out and down her wings and i am death warded which feels weird to say and whittle you feel kind of an oozy thing crawl onto your boot. Oh god. What is it? It's a tiny little snail. Oh, it's so Hi. cute! Hi. Uh, I think you and I are related. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. You sure sound like me, though. What's your name, little snail? Uh, it's uh, Whittle, because I'm so small. Oh no! <laughs> I'm, I'm very small for a snail. I'm also the fastest of my kind. Sometimes I get across a step in as much as eight hours. 
Oh, uh, you want like long stride or something? Are you gonna hang out for a while? You're gonna I'm good. Go. Okay, you're real fast. I mean, I can't even see you moving. You're moving so fast. Accurate. I see it right there. Oh my! <laughs> no, you didn't. I shall pass the voice. I, you know, I would like to um, ready a globe of invulnerability just in case. <laughs> she went through the stages. <laughs> she was like, should I globe up in vulnerability or not to globe? <laughs> I mean, listen. It's a big spell. I love it. It's a big spell. I, I, I get that. And, and it drops the bless. Globe oh, Peter. that's oh. good to know. Yeah, because you can't it, concentrate it, it, it on two things. If it goes off, yeah. Okay. We're outside it, wait, the door. wait, wait. If it goes off? Holding so the what? action so, requires so concentration. Holding. So are we doing holding? Because Whittle has three spells ready. Are we doing multiple spells, or are we only allowed to have one? Mm, Whittle has a spell cast that was the Crown Flame Stride, stars, which flame. is just on, and Crown of Stars just stays on as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so your hearts are gone. You can Got walk it. in with Global and Vulnerability, right? Yeah, I could walk in with it, but I won't. I'll keep Bless on this fine. Okay. All right. Freely opens the door. <laughs> you open the door, and it's just a... <laughs> This is a thick, about, about a foot thick wooden door that you just kind of push. And well, you don't see patient and pushes it harder. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you see, you just see him spinning his little legs as he's like trying to push it. <laughs> uh, there are no hinges to this door. It's, there is some kind of magical hinge that the door is moving on and you move the door aside. And yet and... it still groans like you need to oil the... <laughs> Vengeance. It's very <laughs> groany magic. Very dramatic Jeez. doors here. I gotta tell um, the gnomes about this. Super and, dramatic. Uh, and you see this very large domed room that you have not been in before. This is not the court of the Norns, but a different place. And you do see them on uh, elevated thrones that have some kind of base underneath of them, also made out of the world tree itself. Uh, each of them, there is one that is wearing white robes, one that is wearing gray robes, and one that is wearing black robes. And they all regard you as you open the door. And you see these little river, like tiny little melted beads and streams of gold. Um, just a raindrop thick, moving out of the very center of the room and then going up the walls of this dome-shaped room. And then you see all these carved carved grooves into the ceiling. And the gold is moving into those grooves, forming tiny rivers and moving up to the very top. As soon as I see this, I sheath my sword and I'm like, Norn, we are here to speak with you, which I assume you know, being the gods of fate. May I step forward? You may. And where have you been? You, for some reason, were beyond our sight. I flare my wings up. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> and then <laughs> and start walking forward. Inspired by that, Orkira's going to let herself catch fire again. <laughs> <laughs> what is it do you wish to say, Freely? <laughs> You all sit in judgment of all lives everywhere. I'm not sure by what authority you do this, and yet apparently it is your way. You've seen we have traveled to realms beyond your perception and beyond your comprehension. We've stood before the Allfather himself who knew this moment was coming where we would be here, and as such, you all know this moment is here. We've come to plead for the lives in all of those foreign domains. We know your powers are great, but you must know by now ours are great too. What can we exchange for your mercy? Do you not see the importance of maintaining this reality, this timeline that you exist in right now? If we allow these other realities to exist, they may infringe upon this one. Yes, you're trying to save lives. 
They want to live as well. They want to exist as well. Their times and spaces are just as valid as ours. Or are you saying some lives matter more than others? We are. Evil. Even the world tree needs to be pruned so that branches can grow further and longer and stronger. But what you're, what you're doing is just destruction and it's self-serving and everything you're doing is causing more chaos. Freely go and roll a persuasion. I'm going to cash in my uh, divine boon, my boon of luck, where I add a D10 to this that I give myself. Mm. <laughs> Excellent. Because this seems like an excellent time to. All right. Yep. Uh, that is uh, 30. Nice. <laughs> then how do you propose we maintain these other worlds then, freely? What if there was a solution besides destruction? What if you had gardeners that could prune these unruly branches on occasion as necessary rather than simply burning whole forests to the ground? And would you all be the ones to do this? I very slowly rotate into the group. It sort of depends on the job requirements. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah, sure. Yes. I feel like there are other things we need to understand before saying yes. <laughs> maybe, but maybe. in general, gardening sounds kind of fun at this stage in my life. What it is you're a... Go ahead. What you're doing has just caused more timelines and more chaos. So you, you should try something different. We have not caused extra timelines. We are pruning the timeline so that we have only one. Oh. And we are also removing those that would cause issues in the future and in the past. Except by doing that, you've inspired people to fight against what you're doing, which has caused more timelines. And I know you know for a fact, I know what happened. Do you not? We have only are... removed people who have interfered. Do you not think that there are things you can learn from these other timelines, from these other people? Roll me a perception check. That would be a natural 20. <laughs> So it's a 27. All three of them grit their teeth the moment you say that. Why are you so offended by that possibility? Those timelines have many failures. This is the only timeline that matters, and we are the ones that are willing to do whatever it takes to make sure everyone in this reality stays alive and that this branch continues to grow. If thou do not dost learn plant, from your failures. We have not failed. Oh, really? There We're standing. Failures. If thou art so perfect, then exactly why are we standing with all of these stout folk behind us that are some versions of ourselves if thou dost plant a tree several seeds in the in the clearing then if those come out one of them is going to emerge and and choke out the others and so i believe that in doing that in learning what is happening with all of these timelines that we actually, that is how we find true perfection. And the only way that we will be able to find it is if we allow the other timelines to exist. 
to learn from as Lady Alindra is putting forth. If you all have really been watching, if you've really been paying attention, you've seen all the rights we've wronged across the world, across the plains, across my entire life. I'm guided wherever I have to be to save people, and right now that's in front of you. So, let us either be a part of your solution, or we will have to enact our solution. Ogma teaches us that the greatest gift we can take from a journey is awareness of the other beings in the world, particularly those who are neglected, forgotten, mistreated, oppressed, or ignored. The greatest gifts we can give are to grant those people means to tell their story, to ask for that which they need, and to honor their identities. And you are eliminating that possibility for infinite people. And perhaps, with your assistance, we will find a way to govern those other timelines without erasing them. I hit Orkira with message. This is it. Crossroads. I know you don't like these people. I don't know that we can fight our way out of this. This might be the best deal we're going to get. Then let's make sure we get this deal in details and we are not subservient, but partners. I'd say the message back to Freely. Mm -hmm. Because Orkira is trying to not speak to the Norn because she's got her own problems. I turn and look at Penelope and I just say, well, what do you think? <laughs> well, I think that it might be able to save a lot of people, but can we really trust them? I lean in very close to her and I say, can you ask the tree what it thinks? Penelope will... <laughs> Are the walls made of the tree? Yes. Then Penelope will slowly inch herself behind everyone. I will intentionally move my giant flaming winged body over so that she can hide behind me. Briv starts dancing. <laughs> and Whittle, Whittle um, just opens Is up like her, a pop her cape. Thing or... <laughs> okay, Whittle, you just open your cape, your vampire yeah. cape. You're just... <laughs> I, just, I just start dancing with Briv. Uh, and... let, let my cape billow. What are you doing? <laughs> Dance off, bro. Yes. <laughs> Dance off. It worked on Ronan the Accuser. Yeah. But the, then all three of the Norn get off, up off their thrones, and slowly walk down the stairs. Okay. Oh, it's on now. Penelope I, moves quicker. As I, mentioned, I have very much position. I do really pull my wings out, and I move between Penelope and them, but I don't grab my weapon. I'm just sort okay. of like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or she's going to do what she does. I'll call yeah. out to the Norn and say, can we trust you? If we're going to get into this partnership, how do we know we can trust you? Well, you don't have a choice, and we oh. care about this timeline more than anything else, but why? we see the value in other timelines. First off, why? we have choices. Why this timeline? Second off, that. Why you feel that this, this is the most perfect one. one. Perfect? What, what defines a perfect timeline? The one that has potential to last the longest, but was the most troubled. Have we distracted them enough so Penelope can get to a wall? Penelope, what are you doing? Penelope, like, slips a leaf out of her hair and starts chewing on it, and she's gonna touch the wall or the, the tree, and just begin to... I don't know if she needs to speak out loud, but I feel like she wouldn't. So she's just going to use her emotions and feelings and thoughts to get a sense of the tree and to maybe ask... Uh, 
the the Norns rule over you? No. And you all, you don't necessarily hear what Penelope is saying, but you feel the entire tree kind of vibrate. What's the Norns' reaction to that? They're looking around. Y you like the Norns? We like our Norns very much. So you trust them to do the right thing? Yes, we do trust our norns to do the right thing. And the right thing is to... To save lives. But that doesn't make any sense. They're destroying lives. Our norns are not destroying lives. Uh, I kind of thought they were. They're destroying timelines, which have countless amounts of people. They have lives and, and livelihoods, and it's not right. They are not doing this. What? And who is? They are not. Our Norns. Bailey, red alert, red alert. I attack. <laughs> I require nothing else. Oh, jeez. Hey. <laughs> yeah, Briv yeah. just in one of the dance moves, like, pulls <laughs> out, like. Yep. We can go into initiative if necessary, but when she's like red alert, I'm like, you know? All right, let's do yeah. initiative. Oh, so no. we get all those reactions out of the way. Yep. I really hope okay. I didn't interpret that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no. can we, so we can do our reactions before initiative, or we, do we have to uh, wait? Well, let's roll initiative so we know the order of reactions. Have oh, no. oh, gotcha, okay. Do, do you want Ooh, one of us to... 20. That is also hey. a net 20. Whoa! <laughs> but for a 25. I'm a, I'm a dirty 20. Yep. Do you want us to post our numbers in chat? Do you want us to keep... Yeah, go ahead and start posting those in chat so I can get this... Uh, okay. Game all squared chat. away. Game chat. Okay. Bad eye. I got a dirty oh. 20, so... Um, sorry, here. I, I also got a dirty 20. Hey! We're all really hey. Are we doing game or party? I apologize. Game. 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 Okay. Um, 20. So that was Whittle and I both natural 20s for the sake of the thing. Hijinks. Yes. Mm hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, have, so we feel the tree rumbling, but we have not heard any of this conversation. We just hear Penelope announcing red alert. Yes. Yep. We're we're also we're in the telepathic bond, right? Yeah, it's up to Penelope if she said it out loud. Uh, as Penelope said it out loud. Yep. What, like everything, the conversation you just had. Like I'm trying no. to figure out how much. No. Okay. I don't no, think we we didn't hear any of that except her being like red alert, which we're, is all I trust, needed to know. Yeah, all <laughs> yeah. And and yep. uh, do we have the telepathic bond so that we can talk to is each other? Is that a concentration? No. It's but on. I don't no, remember. It's, it's on. Yes, it was on. It's okay. always on. I, yeah. It's I part of your channel's yeah. open. It's brushing, me, brushing my teeth, casting telepathic bonds. The reason I ask is because Orkira and Whittle are fire creatures, and if we don't actually want to attack the tree, but just the Norn. <laughs> well, I we, have sculpt spell, so. I don't. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, first up, we've got. Uh, so, Freely, Freely, you're first. Uh, okay, hang on. Sorry, I'm just uh, assembling a dice pool real quick. Okay. <laughs> and at that moment, uh. you feel the entire world tree start to shake and groan, and you feel like the roots are kind of like pulsating. And 
you know, looking around the room, you do see that someone's been carving very deep grooves into the world tree this entire time. So, I am prepared. Um, Mr. Kendrick. Yes. When Penelope says, red alert, uh, you said they were coming forward. Which one is closer to me, the white one, the gray one, or the black one? The gray one. Excellent. Freely still has his shadow blade, uh, which I said I had holstered. He draws another shadow blade, but it's not the one you saw before. It's the one he recovered from Loki's trick where all the frost giants were. The black shard that he had. And he goes for the gray one, which I believe you said was an automatic crit when I would use it. It is an automatic crit. So Freely is going to Searing Smite, erupt into flames in Green Flame Blade, and Smite when I hit this thing. Okay, hit an armor class of 22. I mean, oh, so do I need to hit, or it's a crit only you, if you I got, You gotta hit, you gotta hit. All right. it, I mean, <gasps> it's fine. a crit if you hit. Oh, That's God. fine, because I hit an armor class of 24. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, uh, roll, roll the dice on that first attack. So that is going to be 6d8 plus 10d6 plus 4. <laughs> so let's see how that goes. Tell, so tell me the amount of damage you just did in one strike. Oh, only 63. <laughs> that's, that's, oh my God. It's only 63. I could have done more. But At yes. that moment, how does it shatter? Because as you know, this thing oh. explodes upon impact. I think... Uh, when I hit it, it erupts and leaves a black burn across it and across my metal hand, too. Both of us get burned from it. Yeah, However, the, shard, the shard that was made real by the weird netherese structure, which was an illusion, which was only just the absence of light itself is razor sharp to a molecule. Just mm-hmm. You freely just shove it right into the chest of the first gray Norn. And it explodes all over his own hand, scorching it and scorching uh, the very center of the Grey Norn at that moment. And they all scream at once, and you see that darkness spread right about the collarbone, and it spreads on all of them. They all take damage. Also, he's going to be on fire. So my next turn, he's going to keep burning from my Searing Smite. Okay. Uh, that is, however, it for me. It's really, it's just like lunged and gag this guy. Uh, and that's it. Uh, they're they. But yes. They're they. Uh, and are, do you have a follow-up attack? No, because Searing Smite was a bonus action, and Green Flame Blade means I don't get to multi-attack. So, nope, that's yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right. Whittle. So, since I was holding on to this fireball uh, using Subtle Spell, I imagine that I had sort of a invisible ball of fire in my hand this whole time. It kind of hurts. Was it like behind um, your hand, like your back and you're just like, just, just hot potatoing it? Just playing hot potato <laughs> with it. But I was in the middle of dancing uh, with Briv. So you just see her twirl around as her cape billows behind her and chucks this ball of fire at the gray one that was attacking freely. Um, and let's see here. The damage, if I do hit, is 43. What's the save? The save is deck 17. It saves. And then I am going to... So what's half the damage? With fireball? Because does it take no, half knowing, damage? Knowing, knowing is half the damage. <laughs> <laughs> um... 21, it's an odd number. Okay, you you notice the Norns are hit and they resist it and then they resist it even more as some of the energy just kind of wafts off of them in waves as it almost, it's like watching fire become water as it Mm. strikes them. Would you say it took maybe quarter of the damage? Quarter would be accurate. Okay. That's about 11. Sorry, I'm, I'm... 11-ish points of damage. Yeah. Okay. Um, And then the next thing I was going to do is 
using the gears and coils um, in my goggles, it generates enough heat to actually shoot a moat of fire through the lenses. Using crown um, of stars? Yes, using crown of stars. So I'm going to hurl a moat of uh, fire at the gray one again. And okay. it's a 28 to hit. That hits. And the damage is 20. Okay. And it's become very clear in these moments. Uh, go ahead and give me an arcana check. <laughs> oh, 11, but I actually rolled a one. <laughs> Yay, chaos. Oh, one. Yay. Yay. Oh, Yay. Chaos. Ah, you don't know. That's three now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, wow, this is not working as that's, well as I had That's actually hoped. four. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we got some wild magic rolls coming in pretty quick. Uh, so, <laughs> no. Will, anything else? No, that's it for me. All right, Penelope Half Pint, what are you doing? Uh, okay. <laughs> Penelope still has her hand on the tree, and she just says, Will you help me? And Penelope, it's up to the DM if this works, but Penelope is going to cast Wrath of Nature. Ooh. What is that? I have no yeah. idea what that is. I don't is know what it is, but I'm What does it do? <laughs> <laughs> so I call to the spirits of nature to rouse the uh, against the enemies. I have to choose a point in the range. Uh, the spirits cause trees, rocks, or grasses to uh, center on the point to become animated until the spell ends. The world tree is gonna fight with us. Yeah. We the Maybe. world tree is the whomping oh. willow. I'm for it. Maybe. Why are you casting this? A wild magic surge strikes freely and very near freely, and also strikes um, uh, as you are casting the spell. Strikes Alindra as well, and Alindra, you suddenly feel bolstered as if you are completely immune to poison. Um, you feel very healthy. You feel like you've had a cleanse. Uh, <laughs> freely, you. <laughs> feel a rumbling behind you as a tree explodes and grows directly behind you. It's not of the world tree. It's like a maple tree. And it just grows behind you inexplicably. Inexplic what did I keep on trying to say this word? And it now just does. It just does. Bad for us. <laughs> but then also, that tree gets animated as Penelope cats breath. Wrath of Nature, and it starts picking itself up, having just been born, <laughs> and starts walking into combat, and then roots from the world tree itself start descending like tendrils <laughs> from the very top of the ceiling. And all of the world tree begins to groan, and the, you feel the floor kind of tilt to the left and tilt to the right as gravity itself starts to change. Meanwhile, in Faerun, in Kryn, on Athos, a slight tremor is felt across the D&D multiverse. Not a full earthquake, but something is happening. What else do you do? Or is that just it? Just the uh, wrath of nature. Uh, well, the wrath of nature will. Okay, uh, so which one? Who? Huh? <laughs> so I don't know what to do. There's two. <laughs> there's a tree, and then the roots. Because I guess I can choose. Now I don't. Okay. So one of those things will make an attack. Does it give you any kind of damage parameters? I'm trying to see if both things happen. I'm trying to. If I'm reading this correctly. Uh, that. It does seem like both things will happen if there's a tree and if there's roots. Okay. If if someone wants to read the spell as well and tell me if I'm wrong, but yeah, the if you're reading it, yeah, at, the end of, at the end of each of your turns, one creature of your choice that is on the ground in the cube must succeed in a. Oh, okay, wait. At the start of each of your, hang on. Yes, it attacks right now. Um, right. We have roots and vines. At the end of each of your turn, one creature that is on the ground in the cube must succeed on a strength saving throw or be restrained. So the roots will come up. So tree uh, for tree trees will attack at the start of the turn, 
Um, they must make deck saves or take 46 slashing damage with roots and vines at the end of the turn They must save or they will be restrained. I will put this in the chat as well. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm looking at uh, so okay What's the DC? Oops I lost it. There it is um, DC sec deck 17 It's they are going to choose to resist <laughs> So okay. the vines, like, all of a sudden, the roots grab onto them, and they, the Norns are extremely alarmed, and they snap the roots off Ooh. and throw them to the ground. Wait, was that a deck save? Yes. That, that's towards the trees that are doing slashing damage. Sorry, it is a strength saving throw for the roots. Either way, they would have saved. Okay. Well, they chose to save, so. Okay. Is it two different so saves? they're going to have to do, it's two different saves. There's a deck save and a, and a strength save. Okay. So you're um, doing... And then as a bonus action, you can also do another attack to make them fall prone. And, and I apologize save. again, what is the DC? Well, it's a deck 17, but I guess for strength, it will also be a 17. Athletics They check. do save. They do save on that. Yep. Okay. Well, a sturdy Just barely. Up. Just 17 on the, on the, on the number. Okay. Okay. I like this though. All right. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this. <laughs> okay, I guess that's my turn. There's no damage taken. Now you can do no. the bonus action thing. Yeah, you got a bonus right. action. Which does, there's a bonus action. Oh, as a bonus action. Well. I don't think there's any loose rock in here. Oh, yeah. There is? There is now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, as a bonus action on my turn, I can take loose rock in the cube and launch it at the creature like a catapult. Okay. Or uh, randomly just one of these pockets. One of the yeah, one of the roots just grabs part of the floor, uproots it, and throws it at one of the Norn. Which Norn do you want? The uh, gray Norn. No, the gray Norn had already taken damage. No, I, I mean, think it doesn't all, matter. We're wailing, on, we're wailing on the gray one, yeah. So. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, go and do an attack roll. Okay. You have to hit a twenty-two. 17. Didn't Total? Yes. Does that include your bless? Because you are blessed. And that's a D8? Uh, uh, D4. Oh, it's just a D4, then I won't make it. Uh, I won't use the bless because it won't make it no matter what, I think. Well, okay. Right? It's not a, you can just use it for the next minute. It's not, it works oh. on everything. Either way, I don't think yeah. that. Yeah, the stone just strikes the side of, of the walls and they scream as it does so and it, the boulder explodes so you just see penelope just like become raging like as, as all these things start to happen and nothing nothing works but she's very angry <laughs> uh alindra what are you doing i think it worked <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, oh, yes. oh, no, yes. this is unquestionably a success yes no yes 100 <laughs> percent um I, I don't want to have to. I think I'm going to have a bell ring out, um, because I don't want to lose the bless for everyone. Um, so I will point to the gray. It's the gray one uh, is still up, and the uh, which ones are up? They're all up. All all of them. We've just okay. all been attacking the gray one. I thought one just exploded with freelies. No, okay. no, the thing so, exploded uh, when the it gray hit him. Uh, I will, um, I will point at the gray, uh, fake Norn, uh, the non-Norn, um, and I will cast Toll the Dead. Uh, it's a Wisdom 18 save. It saves. Okay. Um. That's it, then. Um, and I'll send Griff to assist whoever's doing the next physical attack. Okay. Or Kara. There's a lot suddenly going on. Um, <laughs> do I see, with the animated room of tree, you said yeah. that there was like a hole at the bottom and there was like little golden droplets going up to somewhere in the top. Is that still yep. going on? That's still happening. What do I got to do to figure out what that is? Uh, an arcana or religion check? Well, that's... Is that the same as the, the gold that was the cage before? In no. The cages before? No, okay. not. Yeah, because we shut down the the 
the stuff. Um, um, is I just didn't know if this was another room that might have the same. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Is, I'm just gonna ask out of play. Is doing that check gonna be my action? I'll allow it. So, not to be your action. Okay. <laughs> I'll try a religion check, but it's not. It's yeah. not my forte. Um, blesses attacks and saving throws. Okay, so sixteen. Yeah, those are all the souls in the multiverse moving across their in, their pathways that have been grooved into the very roots of the world tree. Oh. You get the impression the they're norm? impervious to damage. No, oh, that's fine. But now I look back down at these Norn. Are they undead? Are they liches? Are they... They are not undead. They are not liches, and they're clearly divine, and they appear to be who they say they are, but... Then I, I think for... Uh, so I've still got my sphere up, so everybody is still um, resistant to fire damage. Uh, oh, and now your temporary hit points go up to four, so if you had three before, you now have four instead. Um... Penelope, what's going on? The the tree the tree said that, that, that these are not it's Norns. These are not they're Norns. I, I don't know. It just seemed like they aren't right. Okay, so attack the Norns but not the tree. Yes. Alright, I will guiding No! <gasps> no Um and I over the telepathic bond will say, Do we have the bracelets? Yeah, when, you've got them, right? Timeline. You you've got them. Do, are they still in my bag? Uh, it, unless they were removed. Okay. They should um, be. I... May I summon Grip back to me? Uh, it's not your turn. Okay. Um, uh, then over the telepathic bond... They're here from another timeline. I think. Another world. Another existence. They don't belong here. Ooh, I'm kind of tempted to. I don't think I've banished. Um, I wonder. No, but I wonder. You want, you want those bracelets? It's, do we think that will take them where they need to go? I don't know, but I will then use my action to go over to Alindra and reach into her bag and start pulling out I'll, bracelets. I'll hand you three, three bracelets. Yeah. You accepting the bracelets are going to be an action. Yeah. I'll, I'll use my action to do that. If Okay. Uh, portals open up all around you. <laughs> There's like three different portals, I believe. I still do get a bonus action, though. Uh, oh, I, if you a wanna... portal opens up in front of Whittle, suddenly, as wild magic surges throughout the room. Uh, there was one above that for Whittle as well, Tom. Okay, oh, what is the one above that for Whittle? Every creature within 300 feet of Whittle becomes invisible for one minute. No! Look at some creatures. <laughs> you all become invisible. Do the Norns become the invisible? Including the Norns. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's unhelpful. Um, team? Thanks, chat. We appreciate Are that. <sighs> Is everyone still here? Can, can anyone hear me? Yeah, we're all still here. Okay, um, so... And a goose walks up to Penelope and goes... <laughs> and goes through on the portals. <laughs> what is happening? Chaos! Do I hear the the goose squawk? Yes. Is there a goose in the room? <laughs> All right. Okay. Bruce so, still Mero. Wait, wait, wait! I still have a bonus action. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not gonna work, but I'm still gonna do it. Uh, all right, my action is to grab the bracelets. My movement was to get there. I have talked to a bunch of people. I'm gonna cast spiritual weapon. Okay. Uh, because that's a bonus action, and I w uh, they're invisible, but I can see where I, I saw where they were. So I will create the the uh, flaming phoenix of spiritual energy right next to where I thought it was, and I guess I'm doing this attack roll with disadvantage because if it's invisible. Are. All right. If you're Avon, you just hit because that's how Avon works apparently <laughs> on D4. And, but I still do get the bless. All right, so that's a 28, even with disadvantage. Huh. Ah, 20 hits. All I mean, right. 20 hits, yeah. Um, it's going to take, the, so this is the gray one. It's going to take 10 force damage as my phoenix rakes claws over wherever it can find. 
and then I'm done. How much damage? Ten. Force damage, if it matters. All right, Briv still marrow. What you so got going on? <laughs> Briv, uh, no one can see this, but he is uh, clutching his chest, and he just utters a prayer, and he says, "Even though I cannot see thee, I believe in thee." And I'm going to, as a bonus action, <laughs> use harness divine power to recover a third level spell slot. Okay. Uh, but then. <laughs> And nobody can say this either. He was trying to look in a mirror as he was saying that prayer. <laughs> and, but uh, but then uh, he is going to spring forward to where he last saw the Norn. And um, because they were close-ish together, right? Yes, they were okay. close-ish together. So if it you helps, you can see my spiritual weapon. Okay, that, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to go there to where I think that I am centrally located, and then I am just going to, and again, I guess nobody sees this unless, like, because I think we're all invisible even if we attack or whatever. But, um, so, um, up to you whether you see the just shards of metal shoot out of my pores, but I am going to Nethery's Explosion, um, and uh, within that uh, 20 feet, uh, I'm going to try to get all three of them in it. Hopefully they're close enough to do that. And they've got to make a uh, dexterity saving throw of, uh, let's see, sorry, what is this? Um, oh, it's, um, I gotta look at my spell. They got sorry. 15. Uh, 17 is what they needed. Okay. So they are going to each take, uh, ooh, 42 points of uh, slashing damage from the metal shards. Ooh. Yeah, the steel just, you see all that steel just shoot out and then pop back into Briv Steel Marrow at the same time. And you do become visible, I will say. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I love it. I want to be visible. I want to be seen. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Briv Steel Marrow explodes into a metal, just a metal fireball, essentially, of just metal, just flies everywhere, strikes the Norns, and then pops back into them. And now they go. Anything else? No, I'm right in their grill, where I want to be. I'm very close to. And so is Briv the only one that's visible right now? Briv is the only one that's visible. Or do we stay invisible for one minute? No, if you do attack, you become visible. Okay. That's just the ruling I'm going to put on that. Yeah, if it's not greater invisibility, that's how it rolls, yeah. So. Otherwise, this is going to be the weirdest memory we'll ever have of this game of like, I did this epic thing and uh, <laughs> there's this a room where shit's happening. <laughs> it's just a quiet room with screaming. Uh, okay, so... All right. Freely. My body's ready. The Grey Norn walks directly up to you and locks eyes with you. I thought we could have worked together and strikes you with unerring slam. Which does what? You take 64, 60 force damage and you are pushed five feet away. Uh, okay. So, oh yeah, no, no, no save, no, there no is shield. no save. Okay. Six zero, you say? Six zero. His but a scratch, no problem. <laughs> Briv's... And then that norm becomes a vi becomes visible. Yep, that nor okay. the gray norn is now visible. So he could see freely. How did he find freely? Yeah, true vision, uh, true sight. Yeah. They got norn yeah. powers. Yeah. I don't mind. Okay. Yeah. I figured. So but, but I, I can see man. everyone with true sight. Though. Yeah, you can see. You can see all of this. Yeah. I was I was moved how far away? You said sorry. Just five feet. Okay, great. And Penelope. You also are hit with an erring slam and you take 60 force damage. She's only going to take half of that. Oh, because yeah. Because warding bond. Bless you, my god. No, you actually didn't. Alindra did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, true. so 30 damage. I'm still up. Oh, my god. Ooh. Barely. And also... Are they willing to hit? No, it's no, it's unerring slam. Unerring, they can hit. That's okay. Go on. 
and then they are ta targeting Orkira. I need you to make a charisma can, saving can I, throw. Can DC I ask, 20. Can I ask a question here? Go ahead. Um, is, is this a spell or an attack? It is an ability. It's an well, action. Specifically, I'm wondering if it triggers my sentinel, because it's if you if they attack someone near me, I can hit them. So I will say that is an. I, I will say that that's a trigger for you. Yeah. All right, then I'm gonna I'm gonna lay a sentinel. On, on the, uh, which which one is within? Um, is who who attacks Penelope? Because that is the the one that would trigger my reaction. The one in black. Excellent. I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, uh, that is. Um, a 23 to hit him? Yes. Uh, I'm going to drop a smite on him, too. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, because that's how we do around here. Uh, I'll give you the damage in a second. Sorry, okay, you can go, go, and, go on with go it. Go and yeah. roll it up. Uh, okay. uh, or care, I need you to make a DC 20 charisma saving throw. Okay. Oh. Well, that's a natural one. Oh. So, no. no. I won't even bother rolling the bus. You are teleported into a prison cell in the dungeons of the Norns immediately. However, the cell is open. <laughs> <laughs> Convenient. But you are one floor down from all of this. 29 points I put on the black one. 29? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I appreciate the dogs. Like, I feel like you need support right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, we are uh, back to Freely, <laughs> as you used your reaction. Yep. Uh, I'm still going after the gray one. I'm finishing this dude off, because he's visible now, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, bonus action. Hexblades all the Norn are visible, by the way. They're all, they are all became invisible all at the same time. I'm going to bonus action, Hexblade's Curse. Okay. Um, and, which is good because I have a 19 on the die, so that makes one of these a crit. <laughs> um, so I'm going to... Um... As you do so, as mm -hmm. you cast your... Well, not cast, but as you lay down your curse, you see it mm -hmm. kind of fork and hit all three of them. Oh, now that's delightful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, uh, I'm just going to... Um, the, the other one was a 25 to hit, which I think is enough, right? Yes. Uh, so and there for... still is a portal, and again, the goose runs off. <laughs> <laughs> There's just an open portal to another world. Uh, so this does an additional five. This I'm laying all this Wait. on the gray one. Will 15, you stop trying to tempt people with portals? 16. We have enough problems right now. <laughs> tempting you with uh, gooses. <laughs> I mean, it's a very the tempting goose. Co but... Cobra chickens. Um, so hang on. Sorry. This 18, is true. 15, You're totally fine. 16, 20, uh, 20, next on 20. Deck is Whittle. 25 mm -hmm. on the first hit. Thank you. And the crit is going to be uh, 10, 15, 22, 26, 30, uh, 35, 70 points of damage on the second one. 70? <laughs> 7 0. Yes. And even with a half. Uh, um. uh, <laughs> Even half. <laughs> it's just like, ugh. <laughs> All over this thing, man. <laughs> like, Now's the time. Also, really is grievously wounded, by the way. <laughs> it's just not stopping. Yeah. So. All right, Freely. Yeah, you just, you just, sli you just, <laughs> you just jump up and like, stab, 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 stab into the gray one. Yep. And Freely is looking very rough. Whittle, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. So all three of the Norns are still standing, right? Oh, yeah. And are they within 20 feet of each other? They are within 20 feet of each other. That's yeah. an accurate assessment. <laughs> and we can see all of them. You can see all of them. Excellent. One, when one of them attacked, they all became visible. Okay. Um, so I still have six motes left in my crown of stars. Okay. Um, so I am going to shoot one of those at the gray Norn. Okay, I imagine you need that one has armor lowest. class of 22. Uh, 28 to hit. Again, uh, and then twenty-two for damage. Jeez. Okay. And then, uh, using my second sorcery point um, to use subtle spell for <laughs> fireball. Not that it matters at this point. Um, her invisible fireball was kind of like a boomerang the first time she used it, so it just kind of 
did damage and then came back to her. She catches it on this round and then hurls it back uh, centered between where the three of them are standing. And that is a deck save of 17. Okay. What does your fireball look like? It is invisible. <laughs> you just you just feel immense heat coming off of it. You see the wave. I'm going to say that it's not invisible. You do see like the heat waves meet made by like, it. Yeah, like when you're outside in Florida on a really muggy day. After it rains, you just kind of see the... You had me at Florida. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the waves happen. Worst. You become visible after you shot the moat. And it was it did resist it. Uh, I mean, it did save. Uh, what's the damage? Forty-two. Forty-two, and that is halved as well. So that would be twenty-one. So it takes half, not quarter. Well, it's saved, so it's uh, so no, a it's it's a quarter. So yeah. ten, ish, ten and a yeah. half. Okay, you you cast fireball, but you oh. That's right, you hit all of them so, though. You so did hit was... all of them, so they take 30. Oh, that's right. I would have hit all of them in the first round too. Yep. I'm aware of it. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so that was total for the gray one, 32 points no, of damage? No, the... did, they, did they take the 22 damage from the moat? Yes, uh, no, only one of them took damage from the moat. The but... gray one? Yeah, Okay. so, all right. That's now, it for me. Penelope Half Pint, what are you doing with the the world tree? How's that going for you? First things first, Penelope, realizing how damaged she is, uh, you start to see her eyes flame as her bonus action taking both of her wild shapes to turn into a fire elemental. <laughs> nice! Also, the, the, trees, <laughs> the tree attacks at the start of her turn. Yes. Yeah, it, yeah. So it's each enemy within 10 feet of the tree must make a deck save. Yep. Um, so that. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and let, run, run me through that real quick, if you don't mind, Penelope. So <clears throat> what is the save on that? So the save is going to be uh, for the roots and vines will be a strength saving throw DC 17. Technically, the roots are at the end because it restrains oh, them, so mechanically it might matter. So it's okay, dex okay. at the top of the round with the tree. Dex 17 for the dex trees. Dex is a for... definite failure, and it's going to burn a legendary resistance. Okay. okay. But that's for the trees? Yeah. Okay. It's got Good. one legendary resistance. To keep me honest, it's only got one left. Good. Okay. Good. Then now it can make a strength saving throw. All right, and you're doing this to the, all of the Norns, and they get a 19. If you're wild shaping, your wild shape's only a bonus action, so you can do another thing before they have to, uh, yeah, um, deal with the roots. Thing. Oh. Yeah, because you're circle so of the moon, it's right? Not, yes, but it's not my it's not my action to nope. do the tree stuff. Circle of the moon. Oh no, that all that all is happening independent of you. Yeah. I can do all the things. <laughs> you can. Welcome yeah. to being an awesome druid. The, the only thing you can't do with with your existing tree thing is the rock the rocks attack, because, because that's, that's a bonus, bonus action. Yep. Yeah. Okay, then let me look at what I can do as a fire elemental. Oh, fire forms. Uh, I'm going to do a multi attack. Okay, what is your multi attack? The armor uh, class is 22. Oh gosh. All right. Um, if I get ticked, I'm going to yeah, run forward on whichever Norn I think had hit me. I don't know if they're still in the, that vicinity, but I will make an attack to them. I got a 25 to okay. hit. The one in black? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that hits. So that will be 10 points of fire damage. And if the creature is flammable, they ignite into flames. Until the creature is... Oh. What's that? Sorry, one thing I forgot is I need a con save also, or the gray one should have burned on my turn uh, from my Searing Smite. Con, take. con 17. Con 16. Con 16, sorry. Yeah, I got above that. Okay. it go. The flames go out. It won't burn anymore. Oh, Until I'm, now. I'm, I'm, wait, exactly. wait, wait, wait. Check your health points. I'm going to make sure I didn't just do damage to Penelope on accident. Wait, what did you... I may have caused you damage. I'm just making sure I didn't. Sorry. I think I'm good. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you have another attack? That... Oh, yeah. The multi-attack. 
I can keep going. <laughs> this is so awesome. You can burn thing. this all day. <laughs> I can burn this all day. I think it's uh, very appropriate that Penelope be the one that just like decimates the Norn <laughs> because the world tree told her to. Uh, it's a 21 to hit. Yep. Yes. Yeah, Wait, uh, it's 22. It's actually but... 22 armor yeah. class. So if that's your total, then yeah, I missed. Yeah. Okay. Did you include your bless? I am going to include my bless on this. Okay. Yep. You can include it on every attack and it's saving on all throw. of them. Yeah, yeah you're not doesn't... burning it. It's not inspiration. Yeah. Okay, so that would make it a 24 to hit. All right, you hit. Yes! I, I love everything! I, I love, love D&D! &D. <laughs> <laughs> so that is 12 points of fire damage, and it is still on fire. And now the roots try and grab it. <laughs> yes. How much was the damage again? 12 points of fire damage yeah each target has to make a 17 strength save or be restrained that's a success yep the the roots grab try to grab them and they all snap the roots all together at the same time that is my turn Lindra Sabrand daughter of oblivion clan of monkey mouse what are you doing <laughs> Sure, let's let's try something else. Uh, let's get them back to where they belong. I will reach out and I will cast banishment. Okay. Uh, so the save is charisma eighteen. Uh, however, I will. Uh, I I do not have any portents left, but I will use my uh, prophetic ability, my boon of fate. Um, so I will be able to apply it as a penalty to their save. Ooh. Nice. One of them scream. Which one do you do it to? Uh, the one we've been... The gray one, but I'm assuming because everything else has been bouncing to all three, uh, yeah. this also should. Um, I mean, it's a solid assumption, but the, yeah, the gray one looks at you and screams no and just and there's this a tremor in the entire world tree came. the two other norns are still there but they're they physically look like they've just been wrenched apart something in them is like just like some kind of pain inside of them happens when you do that does the good do, do we hear the noise that indicates that this is not their native plane of existence? Oh, you most definitely do. And what is that sound again? What's this what's the sound for not having a native timeline of existence? <laughs> <laughs> the problem is I dropped everything I had on the gray one and now it's gone. I you, know. you, you, know, you hear an explosion. Well, f fortunately that damage. Sorry rivered out to everyone else you, it's like nails on a chalkboard and you see reality itself warp and shift and get torn open and they are sucked out against their will into the void all of them of a reality that has Good. nothing left all of them or just the gray one just the gray one and you yeah. see as they are spiraling into this endless oblivion a very dead tree in the distance floating in space. I give them the the ancestral halfling gesture as a reaction <laughs> as it disappears. Okay. Anything else and other than just blowing some of into oblivion? <laughs> I, I look at the other two and I say, we are just getting started. <laughs> All right. Next is Orkira Eldrex. Orkira swears in Draconic because she's not at the battlefield anymore or near any of her friends. Is, what is this dog water? What is going on? <laughs> how far away? How far do I gotta go? Dog water? <laughs> yeah, it's not a good thing, is it? Oh, uh, no, no, that's fine. Uh, I feel like no. <laughs> exactly. No? Uh, what are how you far? Doing? I, you said I'm in a cell. How yep. do I, how far do I gotta go to get back to where I know the party is happening? Give me a survival check. Okay. <laughs> That's a 17. I'm assuming you're dashing. Uh, uh yeah, it's I will fly great. my full yeah. 100 feet. I will blitz. 
I okay, so this is what happens. All of the prison looks very identical. It is a massive celestial warehouse of prison cells. We do see our care Eldrex kind of run to the left. Then well, you don't no, because no, I'm invisible. Right. <laughs> you don't see it. You hear the pitter patter of claw dragonborn feet go feet go left, then go right. <laughs> no, no, I had it right the first time. <laughs> And it will take you a full action to get back up there. We do have some multiversal magic or cure. Yeah, we do have some multiversal magic. Let me kind of blow through this really yeah, quick. So I saw, I saw that. If you want to read that, I'll, I actually already took care of it because it's easy for me. Oh, yeah. You already got a short rest. Anything else I'm missing? I think that was it. Yeah, the short okay. rest for me doesn't do anything except I will burn some hit dice in order to get some healing back. Okay, so my my fly speed is fifty. I'm gonna I'm gonna dash. Do I at least get back into the room? You don't get into the room. You you I don't you see get anything? to the stairway and no. no, you don't see anything. Sorry. Okay. Um. My, my shield is still up, but none of you are fire resistant anymore. Um. My spiritual weapon stays there. But it's just flapping, looking really upset. And that's it. All right, Burf Steel Marrow. Um, as a bonus action, I'm going to uh, use Spend my last. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 no. Hopefully that's a free action. Uh, but, uh, but I am going to, as a bonus action, um, again, kind of clutch my chest. And then I'm going to kind of utter uh, a, a silent prayer and uh, channel divinity again to restore another third level spell slot so now I have two of them and then I'm going to turn to the two Norn and say I've got two smites one for each of you and then I am going to try to say one chance to end this now or taste mine wrath this reality is ours now I'm attacking. we are going nowhere <laughs> <laughs> you're like I don't want to hear it <laughs> I mean, just one little chance. Go uh, ahead. Roll uh, your we're text. still blessed, right? Is that right? That I is hope. correct. No, okay. no, no, oh, you're no, not. Not the blessed. Because okay. got rid of that. So I think oh, I missed yeah. with that first attack. It's a 22, I think. 22 think, hits. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think I'm, your banishment is worth the loss of bless. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. And the next one's going to be popped up a level, so I'll get the other two in the next yes. one. Yes. Uh, I missed with the first one. I got a 20 on the die on the second one. Um, yes. Nice. 29. All right, they both hit. And I am going to absolutely smite with one of those that I just recovered with that. And uh, so I'll, I'll roll the damage real quick. You rolled a 22 to... on the first one? Uh, no, 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 no. On the first one, I rolled a um, a 19 total. Oh, okay. So that's why I was asking about bless. But since we didn't get bless, I, I didn't turn that into a hit. But okay. um, second one, I uh, crit and I'm rolling the smite damage now. Okay, go ahead. Big and they are next. Out of curiosity, while he's rolling all of that damage, as I am blitzing through the halls, invisible, do I see anyone? Or is everyone gone? Is there anyone around? Um, there, yeah, there's some outliers wandering around. There's nowhere really to go for them. And they're, they're all feeling that... increasingly weaker and getting sick, more sickly. Well, some of them have nowhere to go, but some of them have ways of getting out of here. So that's why I was asking. Oh, 101 yes. points of damage. <laughs> Uh, or care you see a familiar face pick up a cube and suddenly just <laughs> no. <laughs> and somewhere in the back of her mind she's like and this is why I know the Norn were full of shit <laughs> or Kira was right <laughs> all along <laughs> uh, and only damage? the people on D4 are going to understand that What, what, what did you get, Brev? Uh, 101 points of damage. <sighs> Just smiting Dalmatians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> does your smite look like puppies? Please tell me your smite <laughs> looks like puppies. This time uh -huh. it does. The most vicious Dalmatians. Yeah, you just strike and all, all of your divine energy blows through. What is it just regular divine smite? Uh, yeah, it's it, it was a third level uh, spell slot um, plus plus the crit. So okay. Yeah, radiant radiant damage with the uh, slashing damage of the sword. One second. Huh? I, <laughs> I haven't been rolling enough D8s. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, that one. I, it's like I mean, that I wasn't going to say anything freely, but, you know, I thought it's she true. was a little weak on some of those. <laughs> smarts, so. It's true. Yep, it's true. Um, it's been a long day, okay? Yep. Those aren't the things we say, you know? <laughs> the one in black points at all of you. Let's end this. Everyone within a 60-foot cube, you all start to feel pieces of you start to flake off and you start to come see through it is not and there is no save you all take 45 points of radiant damage freely's down i decide not to take that damage <laughs> totally valid at home uh <laughs> everyone needs to make a wisdom saving throw as well I will probably if you're within I'm, ten feet of me. I don't know who is, but you get a plus four. I'm assuming not He's, me since I'm not in the room yet. No. Uh, if I get the plus four, I am at a nineteen. Yeah, the DC is twenty. Do I have to make a save even though I got dropped? Uh, yes, you do. <gasps> you said you say we gotta get a twenty. Twenty. Double deuce. Sorry, this is a wisdom saving. And the damage was radiant. It was 45 yes, the radiant. damage was radiant. 45 radiant. 24. Okay, so we take half damage. I'm gonna. Oh, no, uh, no, no, no. You flat out take 45 radiant. Okay. There is an additional effect as that a, is a DC 20 wisdom. As a reaction, I'd like to cast absorb elements, please. Uh, radiant energy is not an element. Isn't I, it not? Oh, I'm no. sorry. I thought it was in there as an option. Uh, two things. Freely. Two things. Uh, one, I'm gonna hellish rebuke this dude, so I need a deck 16 save from him. <laughs> oh yeah, because that's what drops you. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna burn him on the way out. Okay, so deck save. Yep, deck 16 is what he's got to be. Definitely a failure. I was a okay. two. Yep, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna burn him up. So, uh, so uh, real quick, Penelope, just before, uh, so you would have still taken only half damage there. Oh, does that? Um, uh, yeah, because that's going I'm, into Briv. I'm yeah. a fire animal. I now have a hundred extra points of stuff, but I'll definitely, definitely take that. Yeah, that, that's fine. So I'm sorry. How much was it, Todd? Like it was 45. 45. And 45. 45. Okay, so I'm on it. And then a con save. So, con or wisdom? Wisdom. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, wisdom. What was the number that we needed to beat there? 20. 20. So second, so it was 21 points of damage on the hellish rebuke. Second, I rolled a one. Halfling luck rolled another one, <laughs> spent a luck die, which got me to 19, which gets me to exactly 20. <laughs> that is nuts. <laughs> and two chaos rolls. Oh, Unbelievable. Geez. Yep. Oh, two universe. ones. Two ones. Yep. And I put 21 points of fire damage on him as I drop angrily. Briv, a wild magic surge happens, and you you hear your own voice. Uh, you absolutely would follow that. Uh, Briv! Briv, over here. Oh, you, what is I, this I, I wondrous make a, dulcet an, tone? Another wisdom DC saving throw, 18. Oh, nice. Okay. 18 on the die, so yeah, I got it. <laughs> All right. You... Oh, that didn't happen. Oh, you... Okay, so you don't... You don't uh, yeah, it's in the portal. You see a little... You see Briv, like, appear from outside the portal. Briv. Is from it, another timeline. Is everything's okay over here. Yes, everything's fine. I Come probably inside. should stay here. Behind him, you see Asmodeus walk by. Briv, <laughs> come on. No. <laughs> Get thee behind me, devil. <laughs> <laughs> Not today, Asmodeus. Mm -hmm. Okay, who failed? Me. Just you? I got a 19. Anyone else get less than a 19? Whittle, you suddenly grow old. Ah, but I'm already old. Just a raisin. To, to the point you see Whittle become wizened and you have only one month left to live. Oh my God. In old age. Oh. You have disadvantage on all attack rolls, all ability checks, all saving throws, and your speed is reduced by half. So you mean to tell me 
I can only go a hundred feet now. <laughs> Damn. With her cane, and she's like, I tell you, Sonny. <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> I used to cut off Stride's hand barefoot, walking up both uh, both ways uphill. Well, walking upwards towards gravity and downwards away from gravity. And I even got his throne. I'm gonna be uh, buried with it someday. The one in white, Alindra, strikes out you with unerring slam, and you take 64. You take 64 damage, and you are pushed five feet back. Uh, so can my contingency should activate at that point? Yep. Uh, Absolutely. So I am in an Odalux, uh, Odalux Resilient Sphere at this point. Uh, yep. A sphere pops into being and protects me from the physical damage. Yes! Oh. Yeah, you see the sphere itself kind of like crack and then instantly heal, and the whole route, you, the sphere itself drags on the floor for a second and just grinds the rock around you as it does so. And that's its action. And they're now gonna, we are on freely. They're gonna take four points of fire damage because they didn't douse themselves out. They're still on fire. <laughs> <laughs> take that two points of damage. That is one death save success. Yes. Okay. Whittle. Wait. What? Yep, as well. I'm very old. I can't hear you very well anymore. <laughs> Hold on. What was I doing? <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm talking out loud. <laughs> um, I imagine in her old wizard age, she's kind of hunched over, so she tries to stand up as tall as she can to slowly catch this fireball that is no longer invisible and hurl it back very slowly at the two <laughs> Norns that are still standing. It looks like she's in slow motion. Hold on. I got this. <sighs> All right. You cast fireball. What does it look like? Go ahead and roll that damage. And it's a, what's your DC for the, the X? 17. Yikes. All right, it failed. Oh my god. Uh, damage is 42. It rolled a 7. Okay, but that does get halved because of the resistance. Sorry, say it again. 42. Thank you. Oh, but they do. Yep. So this is how this is going now. Yep, they're they're on fire and they're both burning and they both scream at the exact same time. That'll serve you right. As they she's, they look hurt. As she slowly reaches for her goggles to push the fire emote button. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I go got ahead. one more thing up my. Oh, there it goes. I got one more thing up, <laughs> up my sleeve. <laughs> 28 to hit. <laughs> Guess it hits. 22 damage. Killing me. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it strikes one of them, and they meet, they they take the damage, and the the one in black staggers for a moment. And I'll teach you to respect your elders. And she sits down on Strahd's throne. This is why. We tried to engineer. We tried to help all of you. We tried to engineer things so your lives would be better, so all of you would be heroes, and you are going to ruin everything. You are going to destroy this entire plane of existence and this timeline. First of all, I'm pretty sure you're an imposter, and you're ruining all of our days, so... I don't believe thee. I think the only thing we are destroying are thee. Then I'll be fine. Huzzah. Uh, Penelope is going to, on their beginning of the turn, they need to make a dexterity saving throw. DC 17. Wait a minute. Wow. I'm really sorry. It was, they rolled a 19. That's fine. Then I'm going to uh, attack them with a multi-attack as a fire elemental. 
It's okay. not going to hit the first one. The second one's a 24. Hits. And that'll be 12 points of fire damage. And then they need to make a strength saving throw, DC 17. Do you see 17? Mm -hmm. They fail. So they are now uh, restrained. Restrained. Okay. So, so the roots, like, wrap the world tree roots, come down and wrap all around the two Norns left and start to start to squeeze. Belindra. I'd like to use my banishment, uh, and I would like to upcast my banishment uh, to, uh, to fifth level. And I will point at both of them and say, We warned you. We gave you a chance. If you believe in us so much, then you should trust that we know what we are doing. You do not belong here. If we tried to learn from you, you would not teach us. You would not listen to others. Return back to whence you came, and I will cast banishment. Upcast. Okay, and what's the saving throw? Uh, it's a charisma 18. They are burning the last legendary resistance. You had to. to. Stay. <laughs> you had to, sir. You had to. <laughs> it was they, like non They can burn one legendary resistance to resist two. They're a one entity, so yes. Like goes goes around, comes around They're on this. Three person swarm. Mm -hmm. And they just turn like this is why we killed your father. And this is why. We destroyed Pan Ildrex, and this is why we turned him into a mind flayer, so you could be better. And then Orkira, what are you doing? You walk through the door. Uh, so, okay, so I get here. Yep. She is continuing to swear in Draconic, and there is just spittle. Uh, can I get to Freely? I have 50 yes. feet of flying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you fly through the room. As all yes. of this has happened, as roots from the world tree are like coming down, like My... columns of like life energy and explosions and fireballs are happening. Yes, but my job is to keep an eye on my friends. And even with my passive, I know exactly where they all, as soon as I enter the room, I know where everybody is. I know what's going on. I see the one that's down on the ground and I blitz for him. And I'm gonna cure wounds at third level. You're gonna get not a lot of hit points. 14 hit points back, and you come back from from being down. <gasps> and then, uh, so I'm standing. I'm kneeling over you, both hands on your chest, snarling. And then my head whips around, and my spiritual weapon moves to be next to whatever Norn it can be, and my spiritual weapon's gonna attack. Okay. Yes. Because it's not gonna do a ton of damage, but that's that's not why I'm here. I'm I'm here to be angry and protect my friends. <laughs> do your temporary hit points go off again? Uh, yes, they do. So you are all within 30 feet of me again. So you all get fire resistance. Uh, I rolled two. So if you don't have temporary hit points, you get two temporary hit points. If you have more than that, you don't get anything. Excellent. Um, Thank my you. Spiritual weapon does not hit, uh, but I move just... it close to this Norn. Okay. Um, uh, we'll, we'll just say when Freely's eyes open, I just look at you and I just go, uh, did we win or are we both dead? <laughs> Neither. Not yet. We're still working on it. Uh, this okay. whole thing has been donkey poop. No, oh. we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Dog water. <laughs> we're still marrow. Oh man! And that's your action. Oh. Sorry, I assume yeah. that was your action. Yeah, I moved. I actioned. I bonus action. So, uh, I'm having a lot of trouble kind of tracking this at this point. Is there anyone who is really, really hurting still? Yeah, I, mean, I have really, really, really Yes. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. we all got hit by 45 on the last one. We came into this fight oh, first. Oh, loudy. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to uh, choose, and I choose Penelope because she's my favorite. No, oh, no, she's not, well, not she's well, she's she, well she looks fine. I'm wild yeah. shaped. I'm looking she's, good. She's fire taking it up. <laughs> yeah. So I can't tell if you're hurt or not. You're just I'm a blazing flaming. ball of fire. Okay. So um, I fire I've is got Freely. Really, you get Alindra. Uh, very well. And so I go and lay hands on Alindra and restore. Thank you. Oh, man. This is a gamble. But I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to lay all 65. Can you take that much? I, I think I can actually. Yeah, because if they hit you again, it's gonna be mm -hmm. that much. So yeah. I'm gonna do that sixty-five right points up. there, and that's all I okay. all I got. And uh, hopefully, I will survive this too. So hope we'll, we'll 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 do that. So you restore sixty-five um, hit points, and then I am going to, um, <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, just simply. Um, position myself after I do that if I have movement left I'm going to position myself uh, closer to the Norn hoping that they might attack me next okay we don't need to be better we already are great and I'm just taunting them. Everyone, uh, the, the one in black points at all of you and the cube suddenly appears and you feel yourselves disintegrate again. And Is that everyone a spell? Not a spell. Everyone takes 45 radiant damage and I need everyone also on top of that make a wisdom saving throw 20. Down again, um, made the save. I'm down. I had 14 hit points. It's a natural sorry. 20. I did yes. not make the Wrong save. Low. 27. Uh, Anyone who didn't make the save is now one. It grows suddenly very old. You have disadvantage on ability checks, attack rolls, all of it, and your speed is halved. And you are one month away from dying of old age. Uh, does that stack? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm in. I'm in uh, death saves. Uh, how many people went down? Freely, a uh, whittle. Well, who else? How's it? Yeah, Freely's back down. Yep. And there, go the other one in white is going to unerring slam Briv for 60 force damage. Um, I'm going to go down to one hit point with Relentless Endurance. Nice. Okay. And that is their action. They're going to take five points of fire damage because they're still on fire. You're very excited about this. I appreciate take it. Take that two points. <laughs> Every bit counts. Every bit counts. Mm -hmm. Freely, you're down again? Yep. Okay. Whittle, you're uh, down? But it made the death mm -hmm. save. Make a death save, Whittle. I've never done a death save before, so it's 3d20s. You have to go over You have to roll 10? 1d20 and it's... Uh, 1, 1d20, 1d20 and it's uh, above 10 is, is success, below 10 is failure. I failed the first one. Okay. I got an eight. Penelope half pint. Still at it. I got to keep hitting. I got to keep. Mm. Uh, so uh, dexterity saving throw DC 17. They succeed. They got 19. Okay. On the, on the die. Then Aren't they Wait, restrained? hang on a second. They were restrained before. Oh, yeah. Restrained. Oh, yeah they yeah, were they restrained before. They yeah, have been able to do anything that required them moving. Yeah. Are they? Were, the yeah, the they hits hit. hit. The, the hits did hit. How did they hit Briv then? I. If yeah, it's okay. a thing, if that's how it works, that's how it works. But yeah. Yeah, it's how it's how it's worded. I. I yep. Yeah. Yep. Let's, if that's let's how it is. Ahead. That's how it is. Yep. But All if right. they're restrained, does that mean they can they fail their decks? They cannot the, move they have themselves physically. They have, they have, yeah. they have disadvantage on decks. They yeah. can't move, and they have disadvantage on. Although technically, on their turn, they could make a strength athletics to try and get out. Yeah, they failed. Oh. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. They, got, so, they well, rolled in. They have to spend, their, have to spend it, their whole action to do it that. It would have been their action. Yes. Uh -huh. Should should so. Okay. Yeah. So so they failed their decks. Failed their decks. They're gonna take. Are you serious? <laughs> oh gosh! Don't go away. Um. 
11 points of slashing damage. And then as a fire elemental, elemental I shall double check that and take another multi-attack. It's going to be a miss on that one and a miss on that one. So I miss both times, but they'll make a strength. I guess they're already restrained. Does that mean yep. they need to... Yeah, they're stuck till they get out. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, and they have to use a, a action to get out. Uh, however, that that eleven is on both of them, though. So theoretically, yeah. it's not reduced. Okay. Theoretically. And are Does you using your bonus action to throw the boulder? Restrained? Does penalty what? Get advantage for them. Yeah, you would get advantage, I think, on yep. being restrained. Yeah. So go and roll the yeah. other one. Roll yeah. one, one more restrained dice in the first attack. Gives attack rolls advantage against whoever's restrained. Yep. Oh. I'm counting so on that. Here. Try Can again both one. times. Yep. Yeah, both times in case you get like a crit. 21 hit. Does a 21 hit? 22. Okay, so no. Both of them still miss. Uh, but I am going to use my bonus action to throw another boulder. Okay, and that's a dexterity saving throw? For the bonus action, make a ranged, just a ranged attack. Oh, so, it's a ranged attack. Okay. Yeah. It's a 22. That's an advantage. 22 hits. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that means it's going to be 3d8. Come on. Bludgeoning damage. 12 points of bludgeoning damage to both of them. Or to one? I don't know. What was that again? How much 12, damage? 12 points of bludgeoning damage. They are hurt. Very hurt. And... All right, uh, so Freely, you, there's been a wild magic surge and it crackles around everybody. Uh, Freely, you gain a first level spell slot. Freely, awesome. you also, any written with anything written within three, 300 feet of you immediately becomes ineligible. So you've lost the ability to write. So it's like you're having a migraine. Eligible. Another I, zap. I already, I already Intel- can't write, I'm unconscious. It's so intel- And it's intelligible. So actually, if you are awake right now, you could read everything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, within... maybe I'll know what they carved on the wall if I get up, yeah. <gasps> also due to a wild magic surge, and you can't do it right away, Alindra, until your next turn, but you control the spice and momently the, the universe as described. You immediately are able to alter one thing about your current situation, environment, Ooh. or appearance. Ooh. And that's Penelope's turn. You're on Alindra. Oh goodness. Can you fix riddle? I mean, if you I can mean, change a situation, you can fix the Norn. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah, I think this is what I have to do. And because it is not a wish, because it is writing the fabric of the universe. I will say that the effects that happen are not going to go away after this fight. You can do this. With anything short of a wish spell or a creator restoration. Wait, which? What are you talking about? The old age thing. Old age thing. Then, Alindra, you know, I got greater restoration. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, uh, I, change one thing about the current situation. I think what I want to do is this situation. This situation should be ruled by the correct Norn who belong in this timeline, in this place, at this time. I want to change the fabric of the universe so that the correct Norn have returned to the world tree. And the Norn that do not belong here are back where they belong. Screaming out of the same void that you shoved uh, the other Norn into, a portal opens, and three identical Norn with different colored eyes suddenly appear, stunned and dazed as they step through. And you see that Amber has been covering all of them, and it cracks open at this exact same moment. And now we are on our care. Welcome back. Go ahead. Anything else, Alindra? Yeah, no, anything else, Alindra? Okay. Uh, 
with flaking scales and uh, aging bones. Orkira, who is still crouched over freely. I'm too old for this dog water now. I'm gonna cast Heal. Um, her flame is a little bit duller, but it enters you and you get 70 health back. Ooh. As Ugh. They at least I'll survive another one of those, theoretically. I'm sick of the up, down, up, down, up, down. I glance over at what, the new Norn. Temp hit points again, because that could be relevant. Uh, yeah, let me, let me, because you'll at least get that. Uh, four. So uh, everybody gets four temporary hit points. I think about doing that at the end of the turn, but it's, it's good to do it uh, right away. Um... I glance over at the new Norn that have come through, and I just scoff. Because I... I don't know what Alindra has done, and so I'm just like, <sighs> more. And my spiritual no, weapon no, is gonna... They're the ones that belong here. Sure, maybe. Uh, and my spiritual weapon will try to claw at the other ones. The bad ones, I guess. The other ones should have vanished, I think. They should have yeah, returned to their own they timeline. Did. They uh, they're not popping out just like that. No. And you did, okay, yeah. Then, then I would have done something else on my turn. I would have uh, taken no, my I, action. I think what you did on was my amazing. Oh, you, okay. you were able to bring, I will allow you to bring the Norns completely back into this timeline and they're stunned. Because that was the thing. chaos roll. Yes, it but, was. But I didn't take an action. I didn't take a. I didn't do anything else. Well, so go I ahead didn't and actually do... take my turn. Okay. Then I thought they, they had returned. So go ahead and go ahead and take an action as well. Then I'm gonna go ahead and try and banish the 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 others. Okay. Uh, away, and I also want to do a healing word on uh, Whittle okay. to stabilize her. <sighs> okay. Um. And you said so one banishment for both is is functional or do i need to do two you we have to do two okay because last time they they only countered with one they used yes. one legendary. they're able to counter with one legendary resistance they're out of legendary resistances but you do have to target more okay. than one for a then banish to work to make, then i will upcast my banishment to seventh level and okay. they need to, to save on it and what's your dc 18 charisma That is a save. That is a natural one. Another one of them just, oh, the portal wrenches open and you feel all of the air go out into that oblivion again. And the one in black screams and falls into the void again towards the dead tree. I can't healing word two. I can't do both on the same turn, so. Uh, one is gone. Okay, Orkara, your spiritual weapon attack? My spiritual weapon attacks. Um, there it is. So this ancient phoenix with drooping flaming wings hits with a 27. Uh, for the max damage, 13 force damage on the one that is left. Okay. And I will use my movement. Uh, you said we're at half speed? Yep. All right. Will 25 feet get me to whittle? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, freely you hear the creaking of old bones and a lot of really horrible things being said in Draconic. And I um, kind of shakily soar on over to where Whittle is. And that'll be the end of my turn. Alright, Briv, you're on deck. I mean, you're not on deck, you are the deck. Alright, <laughs> so, um, Briv understanding he's got one hit point, um, he's out of everything, like he's uh, I, I cannot get hit points up to a threshold that will withstand another attack. Um, and so, um, I uh, am gonna kind of bet everything on the line, and I just spin my arms around to the uh, spectral uh, other beings look fierce and I yell out and then I am just simply since another one is gone now there's only one left I'm going to 
look at them and say, drop thy sword <laughs> from the book. <laughs> I know they're not wielding a sword, but I still say that, and I'm trying to intimidate them. Uh, to, to surrender. They seem unintimidating. <laughs> well, there's only one left. There's only one right. of the Norn left, the one in white. So uh, it, it wants to die? No. <laughs> okay, well, then, then, then if it doesn't do anything, I'm absolutely attacking. It's still restrained, correct? Yes, it is restrained. Okay. Uh, so I've got four rolls to try to get a critical hit. We'll see what happens. You're only destroying your own world by killing me. First one sisters. hits normal, not a critical. Second one hits normal, not a critical. Third one hits normal, not a critical. But, uh, uh, but then let's see. So that means that that first one hit. All right. So then this is the last roll. And I kid you not, I got a 20 on the die, guys. 20 on the die. 20 on the die. 20 on the die. Nice. And I have one more smite, and I am hopeful. I am so very hopeful. Get it, Brim. All right, I got to roll damage. All right, hold on. I'm rolling damage. Roll all the damage. Ooh, that's looking good so far. No, that was bad. <laughs> um, This is level three. Let me make sure I'm rolling the proper number D8s. Okay, um, and then I've got. This is so scary. <laughs> um, ah, that's ninety-seven that time. Ninety-seven. Holy points. crap! <laughs> Are you serious? You did ninety-seven? Uh, yeah. Paladins do what paladins gotta do. What's half of ninety-seven? Um. Uh, oh gosh. Forty. Well, 20, uh, there was thirty-seven right? hit points 48. left. You did it. More than 37. What do you do and how do you do it? After I say, drop thy sword, and it ignores me, um, then I just kind of shrug, suit thyself, and I just <laughs> rush at it and just gorge it on the sword. And it slowly just turns to ash, and a portal opens and I spit up. spit on its face before it disappears. <laughs> <laughs> and it just... Spirals into oblivion, and the portal closes. And the tree, the roots, grow back into itself, into the roof, and it no longer is shaking. Thank you very much. And there is just silence, and you have three I... of the original Norns staring down at all of you. I run over and heal with all. Oh, so I'm. Freely, very much turns <laughs> towards the other Norn, and is like, "All right." Are we doing this or are we gonna talk now? <laughs> Rip drops his knees, sits down. Oh, and just like, like lays down. He's laying on the floor. Blood, everything else in the way. He's just laying on the floor. Thanks, Alindra. A uh, Whittle is actually just sitting in the throne with um, her snail version of herself sitting on her lap. <laughs> oh, you're still here. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, sorry, I had, to, I, had, I had to fight that one out. I had to, like, I, you know, I, you, you got it. <laughs> oh, it must have been you that saved me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what's up with, it, Chell. What's up with these? These are the correct known, the ones who belong in the, in the world tree. And uh, Penelope will pop out of, of, I guess, more like disintegrate into herself again. And she she says, the tree says that we can trust the right Norns. I I feel like we can trust these ones. So this entire thing was because of the tree. So. Everything they carve should be legible to me. Can I make out what the runes <laughs> they put in the tree? That's awesome. <laughs> you see. God, really? Oh, everything is eligible, not ineligible. It says it's legible. Intelligible. Intelligible. <laughs> so bizarre. Yeah, so you see mm -hmm. the universe and the plan that has been dug now, out this by all, this these all makes sense. Yeah. false Norn. And for the last 500 years, these Norn, these fake Norn, well, Norn from another alternate reality, have been carving out fate for not only you, but all of the multiverse. Ah, uh, 
Alindra, can you see that? No, look right over there. That's that's like no, that's that time. That's that time with the kraken. Look at that. That one's supposed to yes, happen. Yes, I can oh. see that. Wait, huh. that was that was me as a mind flayer. Like they I did the mind flayer thing. thing. Yes. But, uh, ah, okay. Wait. Um. Excuse but now, us. the faster he talks, the more yeah. you're like starting to lose thread of what he's saying. You're like, wait, wait, wait. Right. <laughs> I'm like, uh, excuse us, no normal norns, n normal, no, uh, uh, normals. Um, could you like do something about all this stuff they messed up? Yes, we can. And all three of them just kind of wave their hands and green flame erupts onto the roof and burns away the etchings and slowly heals and then you see all these gold ri ri rivet rivlets suddenly free and independent moving on their own paths as if it's rain coming down a building but moving up instead of down these jagged carved paths i lean down and i give briv my hold 10 points to lay on hands and i'm like yeah see it's fine we saved everybody it's all good get up man no you can <laughs> uh, i'm just a l little tired i mean yeah. this has only been about five days back my hamstrings are really <laughs> really killing me <laughs> i look over at all of the others like the dragon or kira and the others are they still fading no in fact they all re immediately look healthy and each one of them starts to wink out of existence. Not death, but you see portals open up all around you as they are sucked into their individual timelines that they were meant to be in. Oh, goodbye, mini Whittle. <laughs> Am I still old? Wait, uh, yeah, you're still old. Yeah, okay. I'm... Everyone who's old is old. So Whittle, I've, I've come on over and I put a wizard's claw on your shoulder and I'm like, I think I can fix this. Hang, hang on a second. I'll yeah, find please it. Please do. Hold on. I'm looking. And she's like rummaging around in her pack and eventually comes out with some diamond dust and I'm going to cast greater restoration on you. Do you, do you blow the diamond dust at me? I, so I think if she wasn't, you know, old, if she wasn't like <laughs> about to die, she would do some flourish and like stuff, but she she just pulls it out and looks at it and then just like slaps you on the shoulder with it. Just like, all right, here you go. You're fine. Phew. Oh, thank thank you. Uh, or Kira, what what about you? I gotta wait to see if um I need that last spell slot. But we've got a little bit of time before I'm gonna be in trouble. And it works, right? She goes back to her normal age. Okay. Brib finally yes. like sits up though. He says, wait, thou art the real Norn. Can thou just fix everyone and make us feel better instantly? I think thou art powerful enough. We are, but it is our rule not to interfere. We appreciate that you have released us from our prison. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> and you're all banished. <laughs> you all disappear what? from the room. <laughs> And you appear in store on Storm Herald. What? Yep. <laughs> Can I resist that banish? No. Yeah, we don't get a save on that. <laughs> no. <laughs> you all appear suddenly, just so boom, and you I are on Storm I want to cast divine intervention and ask my God to send me back. I warn <laughs> you, stay to those norms. I will allow your divine intervention <laughs> freely, rolling on his back like like a turtle. Like, <laughs> <laughs> No. Ah! <laughs> I glare up at the sky and out loud to my god, I say, Really? You won't? Not that? <laughs> but no, it doesn't work. And you are on, are you are on in the courtyard of Storm Herald next to the tree that Penelope had planted. Aww. Hail oh, everyone. Thank, thank the gods. I'm so happy to be home. And she's she's going to go to the bar and pour herself. A Bloody Mary. We did it, you guys! That, anyone else want one? I'm like, yeah. Huzzah. Ch chest bump, chest bump, bring it in. Ah! <laughs> yeah. oh, I look Frank. over to Linda real quick because I know she's still got true seeing on. Are we really back? Are we? Yeah. We are. Then I will use my seventh level and I'll cast Greater Restoration on myself. You are okay. young again. Wait, uh, so 
first of all, I'm sure I can speak for all of us. I think we probably need a nap, but we gotta figure like, what are we doing now? Are, are we even still mad at Loki? I don't, I've kind of lost the thread. We just saved everyone everywhere. So I I mean, maybe we can have a day. Maybe we can have a day. Mischievous little scamp. What's, if they fix all of the timelines and everything that you saw written on the walls, what happens to us? Are we different now? I don't feel any different. Do you? I don't know. I feel a little different because we just pulled off something yeah. incredibly epic. I yeah, feel no. pretty badass. Yeah, yeah no, that was really it. Like, you got the tree to fight for us. I was like, just talk. I was really cool, like, Penelope. Rocks would just throw yeah. and curling yeah, so, all over the place. And then, Briff, you just ran up to that guy. You'd be like, oh, <laughs> good. Oh. That was pretty cool what you did there, Penelope. Did really, you were taking good a job. dirt nap. Uh, oh, well, Wait, I mean, I mean but, but, but then yeah. you got up and it was really cool too. Right. And then and then I wasn't again. Yeah, no, you... but thank you, Akira, for like saving me twice. It was a game of attrition. Yeah. I mean, Alindra got rid of like uh, two of them uh, all, all by herself. Yeah. yeah. She did it. It was amazing. She, she fixed it. You know, but hey, we gave him a chance. I fixed it, but I put people back where they wanted to be. And well, you brought we... the right ones back. You know, we gave them a chance to give up. We told them they knew our power, so I guess they weren't paying attention. <laughs> Everything glows blue around you, Briv, as you detect magic. <laughs> That's another wild magic surge just kind of hits you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I see a parasitic symbiote uh, that is invisible wrapping around Freely's neck and that's where we're going to end our effort. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this did not make you a dungeon master. So you have one last minute. What do all of you do at the end of this? One last minute what? Not oh. in life, in the <laughs> show. I thought you said it was what, a How would you that like to end was very ominous. Yeah. This adventure. <laughs> uh, can I check the helm just to make sure that it still looks the same? Yes. I'm just checking like all the all the um nothing all the vines changed. engine everything looks sound nothing's changed yes you do all have an overwhelming sense of freedom and a lack of restraint <sighs> there is one thing i'd like to do it technically um uh i, I would need a, a few minutes to to rest to swap out sending and i'm gonna cast sending to odin okay and I haven't ridden this one, so here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Odin. This is Freely. We fixed the Norns. You're welcome. You probably knew that. Loki still sucks. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You here. Thank you. And thunder just kind of erupts around in the sky. All right. Good news, guys. I think Odin's uh, pretty happy with the results. So uh, I'm going to go sleep for a couple of days. <laughs> Do not wake me up under any circumstance. It doesn't matter what kind of sounds thou dost hear. It does not matter if it is eating time. Do not wake me. That sounds nice. Yeah. Nice long nap. And Penelope, oh. what do you do? Do you take a nap? Penelope will, yeah, curl up at the base of the tree and, and get into her shrub. And she's just like, yeah, what Briv said. Uh. <laughs> Alindra, what do you do? I think I go back to my room um, and I sit there and I'm petting Griff and I'm petting Grant. And I cast Sending to Averin, who should be okay because the timelines have been fixed. And I say, hi, Dad. I just wanted to say that I love you. Please give Mom my love, too. Talk soon. Or Kara, what do you do? Uh, I'm going to go find Whittle, who went off to the... You're in the control room of Storm Herald? Yeah, first I checked the helm, uh, and now I am in the control room. Okay. I come shuffling on in. I have no idea what you are doing, but I'm going to sit down and watch for a little bit. And I'm going to say, hey, are you feeling okay? I, I definitely feel uh, a little bit more more nimble 
and younger, you know, yeah. for for a 423-year-old feeling pretty good. And, oh. you know, I'm just happy that Storm Herald is still here and in one piece. Uh, it seems like uh, everything is intact. Uh, and I'm pretty tired. I'm actually about to go to sleep. Bat! And she missed the <laughs> steps uh, into her oh. quarters and um, g crawls up to the ceiling and closes herself into her cape and takes a long rest. And what you hear as you you're, you do that is Orkair is in the middle of saying, yeah, I'm glad everyone made it back too. Okay, bye. <laughs> oh. I'm going to... I'm gonna um, message Rokira because now I feel rude. Sorry, I was really tired. Good night. And Good night. is there a, a final thing? Oh, sorry, go, go ahead, Rokira. Uh, and so when she leaves, very awkwardly, I'm gonna pull out my holy symbol. I'm gonna cast Commune. Okay. And after a very long moment, I'm gonna say, Thanks for helping. I appreciate it. I know it's been kind of a stressful couple of days. Are you okay? For now. Is there anything you need? Just you. You know, the feeling is mutual, right? Yes. And Briv, what's your final thing? <laughs> <laughs> he barely makes it in the room. Slams head first into the floor, but he puts a little bit of metal up to catch himself before his teeth and tusks get knocked out. And then he just goes immediately to sleep. And does you all take a very, very well-deserved rest? Nothing happens. You feel like your freedom is now your own and your path is now your own. You feel like there was a weight in the multiverse that you helped eliminate and there is a lightness to your sleep, though it is extremely deep. But Whittle somewhere dream. else. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, Whittle is dreaming of one-shotting all three of those Norns. <laughs> this instant kill. However, somewhere in the mist, in a very old castle, falling apart from ruin and time, a fire roars in a large hall, and a new chair someone is sitting in with what looks like a seemingly a glass of wine at a desk <laughs> next to it. And there is a severed arm dripping blood into that wine glass. And the other hand reaches out and the figure takes a big sip of its own blood. And Straw just looks out the window. No one ever really leaves. And that's our adventure. Thank you so much, everyone. For, thank you for Heroes of the Plains. Uh, it was a really fantastic adventure. I was thoroughly terrified of this day. Uh, but you all handled it like champs. Uh, thank you so much for being amazing players and for also dealing with a absolute monster of a creature, uh, which I don't recommend throwing at your party necessarily, unless you want to see the death. Uh, let's go. Oh, we kind of chose it, though. <laughs> You did choose I mean, death. We chose death. <laughs> we should have chose cake. <laughs> well, you did. You did, you, you, you did decide. You're like, let's go scrap with the fates. And I appreciate yeah. Freely's very persuasive argument until things suddenly became apparent that I, I can't believe you talked about the world tree because they could have easily gone much longer. Because I'm like, well, if someone hits divine sense, uh, they may sense that maybe the Norns are like another set of norns like it, uh, there was some like possible chicanery but t asking the world tree specifics that was probably the the, the big game changer in Thank that you, one it, it was amazing <laughs> that was great. and also i wonder like figuring out the banishments 
uh, like, oh, you're not from here. <laughs> uh, with a laid down some insane amount of damage as well, even with magical resistances, and of course, so did Priven. <laughs> Final and, blow. And uh and uh freely in a big way and of course Orkira with the big heels. So that was amazing to watch. You you all are just wonderful to watch. So anyways, that's it. That's my two cents. That was uh, my first step. Also we next are coming we are coming back next week. Like this all very much sounds like an end of campaign thing, but like No, it's end of this season in a way. I like okay. that. <laughs> this arc. This arc is over. So I figured uh, I just clarified for those of anyone watching because this sounds this sounds like goodbye. This sounds like what we're doing at the beginning of like we're all gonna die. So goodbye. <laughs> well, this except plotline whole, was like three for years the whole in the coming. No one really leaves thing. It's not obvious. Except we don't. Except we don't know anything about that. And you know what? The last time sure. this happened, we're like, oh, let's go and just kill the Norn. And everyone told us we can't kill the Norn. And guess what? We did. So <laughs> hey, after destroying the Fates, burning down Ravenloft would be really easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God. Is, is there a button over there that you just push? There is. It's called just... Give Orc Here a Little Red Gem. It turns on the fan <laughs> that, yeah. that makes the mists. Yeah. It, it's yeah, called Give Orc Here. The... A also little red gem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Penelope have fun. What you got going on? Hi, I'm Hope Lavelle. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at dhopelavelle to keep up with all the stuff I'm doing. And you can listen to me play some D&D on Attackers of Opportunity, where we can find podcasts. It's a pretty fun little show. All right. Uh, B. Dave, I, I hear you say things about words. It a me, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, into the Motherlands Kickstarter ends on the nineteenth. So by the time we come back, it'll be done. Uh, we just added a donation tier, so you could buy a copy of the book and have it sent to the library of your choice. Uh, added that as a as a tier and an add on. Um, and you can catch me on Thursdays at four p.m. Pacific, where I also spend a little bit of time in the mess with Count Strahd von Zarevich uh, on. Uh, the Black Dice Society uh, on D&D, Twitch, and YouTube, and more things to announce soon. And oh, and the new Lambert House shirts are out. Get yours. Yay. They're super cool. You should get them. Yay. Yep. Yep. There you go. That's it for me. Perfect. And Laura, Lauren Urban. You mean Orkira Eldrex? I heard you about to say it. It's fine. It's fine. I, I turned Lauren and or Orkira into one of like Lorex. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Lorex. I, I, I'm kind of okay with that too. Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the community manager for Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You should play the game. It's fun. I really like it. I, I liked it so much. I went and worked for the company. Uh, you can find me in a couple different places. Uh, the most important ones are you can find me playing a version of this character from a year ago on D4 on Sundays at 4 p.m. Pacific on the Rock Punch ATL channel uh, with some also amazing players who are my my home away from home when I'm not here with these awesome people. Also, tomorrow, I'm guest DMing for Dungeon Scrawlers. That's Ooh, right. Hey, hey, I'm going to run a one-shot yeah. for Aaron M. Evans. Yeah, for do a, a violent. Of, for a whole bunch of published authors. I'm not worried at all. Uh, so You're going to be great. There, uh, You're going to do I will we'll see what happens. I'm probably just gonna throw some pies at them. Uh so that's on twitch.tv slash dungeon scrawlers at 6 30 p.m. Pacific tomorrow. So come see me there and cheer us all on. Uh Jen hey. Kretschmer. Hey, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on Twitter as at Dreamless. You can find me streaming on Twitch as Dreamless Jen. Uh on uh Mondays, I'm sorry, on Wednesdays, you can find me uh, over at Renegade Games playing Vampire the Masquerade. We have Vampire the Nightlife, which is a brand new vampire campaign set in Miami. Um, I also am one of the authors on Candlekeep Mysteries, and I am the creator of the Accessibility in Gaming Resource Guide. Um, also a bunch of cool stuff to be announced very soon. So. Very cool. Uh, Megan Kenrick? Hello, everyone. I am Megan Kenrick, and you can find me on Twitter and Twitch at Megan Kenrick, uh, as well as Todd Kenrick's YouTube channel, where we discuss um, new things in D&D, old things in D&D, strange things in D&D. Um, that's, that's pretty much it for me. That's right. And uh, Bri uh, uh, Adam Briv. <laughs> I'm Adam Bradford. I'm the CDO here at Demi Plain, and I uh, you know, just found out that while we beat one super team, 
tonight. Um, the uh, deer, the bucks did not. So, alas. Um, I'm sorry. I, uh, I'm kind of glad I missed it. It sounded like a really bad one. Um, but um, I also wanted to shout out a couple of people who help out with the stream each and every week uh, who've been doing an incredible job. Our CEO, Peter Romanesco, uh, is behind the camera. You've seen Yay. sometimes, uh, you know, if internet uh, goes wonky. Uh, so uh, thanks to Peter and also our wonderful community manager, Megan is in chat, uh, classic Megan. Uh, she's all over the place. And uh, so we really, really appreciate everything uh, that uh, both of them do. Uh, it's really exciting to uh, work in a place uh, with, with such great people. So I wanted to shout them out a little bit here tonight, too. And you can find me at Bad Eye Adam on Twitter. And I am your Dungeon Master. I am privileged to be able to, to uh, Dungeon Master a bunch of people who are really good at things and make my job look very easy or very chaotic. Um, mm -hmm. I do have a wonderful YouTube channel where I talk about D&D with my lovely wife, Megan Kenrick. We're going to start stop. We're going to start streaming on Twitch, and we have kind of a new show series that's going to debut on our YouTube channel very, very soon. I also want to thank all of the people here because uh, I have a coin based on my character from when I was eight years old and is for sale at a place. And I don't understand how to emotionally deal with that. Uh, so I'm not, uh, but uh, I, I love my character even very much. I, I like trickery and now he has a coin and it's kind of a face and it's very weird. And uh, thank you. Uh, a big thank you to Jen as well, who had reached out to them uh, preemptively <laughs> about getting this made. Uh, and so I, I appreciate it. So that's 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 available where all coins are sold, which is only campaign coins, I hear. That's the only place you can buy coins. So if you want a, a trickster god coin, you can find it there. Thank At you. At the low, low price of your soul. Yes, exactly. Uh, thank you, Alison Avery, for, for, for me, making though, that. One yeah. packed. Yeah, no, <laughs> one packed. Worked out, worked out fine. It's not yeah. a full soul. It's just like, yeah, look at Free Freely's doing great. Yeah, no. <laughs> he got his magic. It's just a yeah. deal. Yeah. It's just a deal. Small right. deal. Small no whatever. negative consequences the, whatsoever. Yeah. Don't read the small print. And an NDA. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, uh, for the amazing show. I appreciate you watching. And again, thank you to all of you. We'll see you next week. Later, Bye. Gators. Bye, everyone.